welcome to another amazing day at fmtraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'm here with the wonderful Christian Olson, one of our senior engineers and a manager of our junior engineers. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He also has made the fantastic wolf pack. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, we would greatly appreciate it. We have the FM Training Annual Subscription Bundle. We have two of these. One comes with FileMaker, the other one doesn't. The one that comes with FileMaker also has some other goodies. But uh, it is 100 plus hours of really high energy video training content. If you know nothing about FileMaker and you feel like, you know, learning FileMaker and working on your own projects or refining some skills that you think might, might need some extra help on all that jazz, feel free to pick this up. It would help us a ton. Uh, since Christian is here, I'll also advertise we have the one-on-one -on -one coaching program. If you're like, these videos are great and this live stream is pretty cool, but actually I need to talk to someone directly so I can ask questions directly. We also have a coaching program uh, where we have our engineers talk to you and you can share your screen and ask them like, hey, so this field is not working. Can you help me with this? And that helps with that. With that being said, Christian, what are we doing today? That's pretty good, Margaret. Five minutes and you said hello to everybody, gave us a little uh, update. I, I dig it. Um, so today, yeah, today we're going to continue with the release of Wolfpack. So yesterday I was really fortunate to be joined by uh, John Eisen from RCC and uh, Willow, uh, a junior and UI specialist from Next Tech who had great add-ons. And quick update on that. I goofed up a little bit yesterday. I had gone back and forth with Next Tech to get Willow's uh, calculator in and the wrong one was in Wolfpack yesterday. It was functional, um, but the, the correct one should be in there now. I also added the X8 to the name because I noticed a couple people were like, hey, what version is this? And I had just omitted that. Um, John was also missing a help section. Uh, John was a little bit of slacker. He got us this late. So we've added the help section. He did find a bug with his. I'm going to work with him after the stream today and see if we can't fix it. And we'll do a quiet kind of release. It'll still be part of X8 with that. Um, but today I'm actually going to jump into some of the ones that I have. Oh, and last note also. Um, I, I keep missing this a little bit, but Kyle Williams did give us another add-on. It's a color picker version two. I didn't ask him to necessarily present because we already had color picker one in there. But if you guys get in and start using that and you have questions, by all means, reach out to us. I'm sure Kyle would love to come back and talk about that. And if you guys haven't played with any of Kyle's add-ons, uh, I got to say, so I've used a couple of them. I'm actually really liking them. Um, his date picker is actually in one of the add-ons that I have today, an add-on in an add-on, I know. And I've been using his date picker with a handful of clients. So I haven't used all of his add-ons, but just want to make sure I promote the other creators that we have in here. Um, but today I've got two add-ons um, that are useful and they will work out of the box. They're actually really easy to install. And if you like that and you want to use it, fantastic. By all means, that's what they're there for. In fact, I'm using both of these add-ons in customer files. One of them that you'll see, um, I've used now in at least two customer files because I needed it for someone. And I'm like, you know what? This will make a great add-on. Um, in doing so, and this was actually back at the very beginning of the year, I realized that I could solve a long-standing issue that we've had with add-ons. So since add-ons have come out, everyone's kind of been like, okay, this is great that I can install stuff, but I already have all these tables. Isn't there a way to tie into the existing tables? And you could do this with relationships, but the main tables you could not. So I've come up with a technique to overcome this, and I'm trying to demonstrate it in this file in a very simple way, if you will, but this could be grown to make larger modules more portable, and I'm hoping to share that technique along with the add-on. So with each of these add-ons, there's going to be a, here's the cool thing that works, but here's a technique. And I'm really hoping that people like Jake or Kyle um, or the Willows out there might see these and go, you know what, that's really cool, and take it and go a little bit further with it. Um, the other add-on I have has a has a very simple, well, I say simple loosely, has a, has a, a technique as well that I'll go over. Um, and John actually hinted at it yesterday in his presentation, and I'll talk about it more because this is something that I've been flirting with uh, a little bit more in development and also with my add-ons. There's some pros and cons to it. So we've got two add-ons uh, with a layer of easy and more complicated uses of them. Um, so I can go ahead and start jumping into this. Let me share my screen. So we've got Wolfpack X8 here. Um, I do need to come in and make some updates to, to Wolfpack. I noticed, and this is almost embarrassing, in the last couple of days that it's not installing base elements for Windows. So I'll try to get a, a sooner update on that. X8 was really supposed to come out back in June. I've just been a bit overwhelmed. But if you search in here, you will find Dynamic List. So that's one of the new ones uh, that we've got today. 
and it does have a pre-flight step-by-step checklist, which is actually really simple. This this one's the easier of the two. The one that I think people are going to be quite excited by, because frankly, Dynamic List is more about the technique. Jake has an add-on in here that does exactly what Dynamic List does, plus more. If anything, Jake's is probably the one to go to for that. But this document manager, I think that you guys will be quite excited about. And this has a pre-flight checklist that if you are just want to install it and use it, um, step one does all of it. But if you want to tie it into an existing table, there's there's 10 step with three stages that we're going to walk through. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move Wolfpack off the screen. I've already installed these to make today go a little smoother. So we're going to move that out of the way. And let's go ahead and bring over FMSP Lite. Now, this, this first add-on that I'm going to show you all, I know a lot of you have followed a lot of Nick stuff. We all really like the stuff that Nick does. And in his UI UX sample file, was that last year or this year? He had a really cool um, documents tab. And I really liked that over what I had had in some of my other files or even what Starting Point was using. Um, and I had customers that needed some updates, but I didn't want to rebuild that in accounts and contacts and purchase orders and however many other modules they had. I thought there's got to be a more dynamic way to accomplish this. So let's go ahead and go into layout mode. We're going to go to our handy add-on panel. And then we're going to look for Doc Manager. I'm going to try to ignore Bo in the background. All right, so we're going to take the Doc Manager that's that click it already installed, and I'm going to drag that on screen. And you'll see we got our little folder right here, and I'm going to double click on that. Okay, and the way that it works right now uh, is if you if it'll actually just work as is, but you probably only want to see documents for the records that you're looking at. And the way that you configure that is in the parameter. So whatever your base table is, you need to get the field name for the ID that it relates to and the parent table. So in star, uh, let's go ahead and use the one that already exists in here. So I'm gonna find T00, oops, documents, ID, and I would need to add, whoops, uh, add an ID account to that. Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to go and do this is actually one part of this. I Whenever I demoed it, I never actually set it up for the easy way. I always did the harder way. So in this new table that we have, I'm going to go ahead and add a key real quick. Where is document manager? I'm going to add ID account. I'm going to create that. Like I said, I actually haven't even used it this way, but I will show it to you because some people might want to go ahead and just add a documents table to their solution. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to double click on this. And I'm going to edit the parameter. And if I start to go a little too fast, by all means, people raise their hands a little bit and I'll slow down. So we're going to do get field name. And I'm going to find that T0 documents. I'm going to find ID account. Did I not add it in there? Oh, Christian is just dying today. This isn't even the, the good part of this. So we got documents manager. I thought I added ID accounts, so I'm in the wrong table. Where is document? There we go. It's so easy. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we'll try this one more time. You think you practice and practice, and I'm like, oh, I sh people are going to use it this way, so I should show them how to do it. So we'll get field name. Hopefully you guys are practicing that, that now. Documents, and there's our ID account, okay? And on this side, we just take it from the table that we're in. So we're in T01. So I'm going to go find ID account. And we're going to say, OK. We're going to say, OK. We're going to go to browse mode. We're going to click this little button. And we're done. That's And I can click add files. And it should pretty much work. So we're going to grab the wolf icon. And we'll grab, I don't know if I have any other images on here. The things that I'm allowed to have TV calibrations. And we're done. That's And then we've got Kyle's date picker here, which is actually pretty handy. Thank you, Kyle Williams. Um, you can put in the types. You can choose the title. This is exactly what Nick had in the UI UX sample file, where it says images and photos. It should show us the file bit size somewhere on here. I don't know I'm not seeing that at the moment. And then I can also delete it. And it just works. Okay, so that's great, um, except most of us already have a documents table. And while it might not be bad to add another one, uh, it'd be ideal to tie into the one you already have. In fact, you might already have documents related to the record 
that you're building this for and you wanna use those existing documents. So how can we achieve that? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this so that I don't forget, I'm gonna change the parameter on this, but I really could do this at the end. And this is what I'm used to actually doing. This is why I was struggling a little bit, T06 ID account. And we just leave that the same. So this is like, hey, this is where I am and this is where it's gonna get set to, okay? We're gonna say, okay, we're gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna open a new window. Okay, I'm just gonna browse here. We're gonna open a new window and we're gonna find this document manager card. Okay, so this is the card that came up. Um, it doesn't need to be a UID, uh, David. I do you use a UUID as myself. It just needs to be the ID. So if you think, so here's what it does. That, that first script is actually really basic. It opens up the table, it goes into find mode. It sets a field by name. So in that case, we're in documents, we want, you know, ID account. If we're in contacts, we want ID contact. And then it takes the parent key that we're in, puts it in there and performs a find. That's just how we're able to do it with one script. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open the card up and we're gonna go into layout mode. And uh, I do wanna give a disclaimer, this, this first, well, the step we're about to get to is the hardest part of all of this. And depending on your file, it's gonna look a little bit different. So for those who, who are kind of newer engineers, the stage one that I, that I refer to this in the instructions can be a bit tricky, but I'll try to make this as simple as possible. So the first thing we're gonna do in layout mode, there's a configure button hiding off screen, okay? So we're just gonna drag that on screen and we're gonna go into browse mode, okay? And we're gonna click on configure and it's gonna say steps to configure to existing documents table. Okay, so these are our stages as I'm referring to it since we have steps in there. So stage one, paste fields. And actually, I skipped the step. We're gonna go into layout mode and we're gonna change the source of this, this layout. So right now it's, it's the one that came with the add-on T0 documents, but I want T06, the document table that's already in starting point, okay? And if you, if you download Wolfpack, the instructions will tell you this. I'm doing all of it off of memory, so I've done it a handful of times, except now that I'm in front of everybody, of course, I'm gonna you know skip a couple of those steps. So I'm gonna click configure again, and I'm gonna do paste fields. And it is really, really important you do that other step before this or nothing, nothing will work. And I'll explain why in a moment. So we're gonna do paste fields, and um, you can suppress most of these dialogues. I have them running just so that they kind of tell me that it's working. But it basically says, hey, I'm going to replace all of the T01 documents with T06 documents. This is an XML find and replace. So we're going to say, OK. It's going to say, hey, I found eight and replace them with eight. And that's what you should expect to see. We're going to say, OK. And then it says, paste the fields in table. Now, if you already change the table, um, it should put you into the correct one. OK, and it should open manage database. If you were last in tables or relationships, you might not be in the correct tab up here, but you basically want to be in your original documents table. You're going to click into here and you're going to do a command V and it's going to paste all of the uh, fields that are used in this layout and in its scripts. Okay. But you very likely already have some of these fields. So I've done this a number of times. I often use this in a copy of starting point, either the new one or our previous one that is 20 or light. Um, and so we already have a date field. We already have description. In fact, they're really easy to identify because they have a two on them. So for me, this is really easy. I know that I wanna keep those three fields. But for all of you, this could look a little bit different. For example, your document uh, field or a document container, you might just have that name different. It might be called container, it might be called document. So you're gonna need to do a little bit of logic of like, what fields am I missing? Do I wanna rename them before I copy and paste it to make it easy? There's not a lot of ways for me to simplify this step too much, but if you are using starting point, you can more or less copy what I'm showing you here. So now I'm gonna hit delete and I'm gonna get an error message in a second. Uh, outside of this, this is just like, are you sure you wanna delete those? I'm gonna say yes. And then it's gonna let me know that some of these fields can't be deleted because they're used by other fields, okay? So in this example, I happen to know that it wants file info display. It wants those three fields that I kept. So I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna double click on it. And it's gonna ask if I wanna save changes. You're probably not sure why it's doing that. Just ignore it and say save. And then you're gonna go to the auto enter options, click specify and remove the two on the field. 
because it's trying to use the new one that came over rather than the one that already exists, okay? Little bit confusing, but if you, if you try this a few different times, it's not necessarily too bad. And if you already have those fields, then it's really easy because it will, the, 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 the add-on will just use them, okay? So I'm gonna double click on this one. I'm gonna click save. And then there's my two, I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna close the window. I'm gonna do file type. I'm gonna click save. And there should be another two, okay? And that's it, I'm done there. So if there's any questions on that, by all means, throw them out there. But this part can be a little tricky because again, all of your field names might be different. The names of the field matter for this because all of this is basically predicated on find and replaces in the XML. So you might remember some previous videos by uh, myself, Kyle, uh, Mr. Watson, there are other in the community who have figured out ways to pull the XML out of layouts, out of tables, out of scripts. And then you can use another program or a text editor or file maker like Wolf's Toolbox, and you can do a find and replace on it. So you can say, hey, take T0 documents and turn it into T06 documents. That's how we're transferring from the other table to the correct table. In fact, Wool's Toolbox lets you do a sequence of find and replaces. In this add-on, we're only changing T0 documents to T06 documents, but in the future, you could actually have a whole bunch of relationships and things that get replaced in that. But that's, that's a little more advanced than we're at. So we're gonna say, okay, and we're gonna go to uh, stage two. From here on out, it gets pretty easy, okay? So we're gonna click configure, uh -huh. Go ahead, Marks. Uh, related only to the ID. Does it, related only to the ID. Does it need to be UUID? Oh, I saw that in there. So I was responding to David. No, you can use regular IDs. Got it. Yeah, good question. And then, so now I'm going to go to stage two and I'm going to click paste scripts. Just like the one before, it's letting me know that it does this. Again, I could turn this dialog off, but it just gives me some feedback that it worked. I say, okay. And then it's telling me what to do now delete document scripts folder and paste. So I'm gonna say, okay. It's actually gonna open the script workspace. And if I scroll down here, you'll notice that I have a folder, let's close these, in the document manager called document scripts replace this folder. I'm gonna delete it, okay? And now I'm going to do a command V and paste. And my folder is back. But what just happened is it went into here and it did, some of these don't really need any find replace, but this, it changed it from, I should have showed you before, but this before said T00 underscore documents container. Now it's T06. Similarly, all of these have been converted. One other weird step, I, I need to come back when I have more time and, and troubleshoot this, that should be fixed by now too, um, is this one right here, um, the insert file, you need to click on this and turn off specify source file. The For some reason, the find and replace or the add-on installation is checking that box. I don't know why, and I just haven't had the time, but if you just uncheck that, if you forget to check it or uncheck it, when you go to add a file, you'll get an error 100. If I remember, I'll show you all. And then this should have been fixed. Um, I can, I might just need to update something on the add-on but it doesn't matter if that's broken. So just ignore that for now. Okay, we're gonna close that. So now the scripts are done. Now we have the final step of converting this over. I'm gonna do configure and I'm gonna do paste layout objects. Same thing, it's doing the replace. This one's got a lot more than eight, 35 items. We're gonna say, okay, delete all layout objects and paste. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go into layout mode I'm going to highlight everything with a command A. I'm gonna delete it. And then I'm gonna paste and I'm gonna to go to browse. Okay, and I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna click on my little handy folder over here. If you remember, we already changed the parameter to be the existing table and starting point. It's gonna open up that window. I'm gonna click add file. I'm gonna choose the wolf and it works. I'm going to do the TV calibration and it works. But I'm not in the add-on table, I'm in my existing one. So I don't think that this file had any documents already related to people. 
Otherwise, what's really cool, I should have actually done that beforehand. What's really cool is the documents already show up. So when I built this for my client before it was an add-on, we already had tons of documents related to all of their records. But the, the method that I had used four years ago um, was like a horizontal portal with arrows. It was cute. I liked it at the time. Once you had enough documents, it was really aggravating to try to increment left to right. So instead, I was like, let's just give you a button. We actually add the little red circle that Nick does, and it tells him how many documents are on there. And then we can just copy and paste this from module to module. And I only have to build it one time, and it's totally portable. Um, then I thought, you know what? This could be an add-on. And if we take some of those things that we've learned from like Wolf's Toolbox or, or Kyle or Mr. Watson's XML Find Replaces, we can basically make an installer that says, hey, look, this layout was based on T0. Let's go into layout mode. This layout was based on T00, but let's just base it on the one that we want. And then we can do the, the copy out the fields and we can run the find and replace and paste them back in. We can copy the scripts, run the, uh, the find and replace and paste them back in and same with the objects. And suddenly we have the ability to convert an add-on that uses its own tables into the existing tables. In fact, if I wanted to make this a little more complicated, I could have relationships where it comes over with its own, but I know that I wanna actually just move them to an existing tog or set of relationships in there. But I didn't wanna do anything overly complicated with this first one, because I wanted people to just see how this works. Now, one of the behind the scenes, and I didn't prepare for this for today's stream, but I still wanna show it to you all of how this actually works behind the scenes. There we go. Is when it's doing the find and replaces, it has to get the XML from somewhere. And it's there's not an easy way for me to say, hey, go to this table, find these fields, and do a copy so that the person can push the button. So beforehand, when the add-on's done, I actually go into the table. I think it's the one right here. I take, uh, not this one, I keep mixing that up. I take the fields that I want, which isn't all of them. I copy it to my clipboard and I use a Wolf's toolbox or something I have that's very similar to save it as XML and paste it into this field. So there's all of our fields or scripts, excuse me. The fields are out of order. The fields are over here. Then we can do that with the scripts. So these are all the scripts in that folder that you saw me delete and paste back in. And then we can do that with the layout objects. So one of the things I forget sometimes when I make the add-on why like I'll think something's working, it's broken, is I have to remember to come and update these blocks of code to make sure that, it, that it's gonna do the find and replaces on it. Um, but again, if you don't even want to tie it into your existing table, out of the box, this thing just works. But I'm kind of hoping that there's some people out there that might take this and go, oh, Maybe we can take this technique and go kind of a little bit further with it. Um, I don't know that there's anything else in the document manager, but um, again, I started this off with a customer file, but part of the reason I thought it would be fun to make an add-on is I know how much our community loves Nick's, um, uh, Nick's different things that he does. And we've actually had people ask that document manager. In fact, I've had to build that panel um, in, that he had in a tab for customers. And after doing it like four times, I got kind of annoyed not that it's bad, but it's just you're, you're doing the same job over and over again. I'd rather copy and paste that and do something that's more unique. Um, so this is fun. You get Kyle's uh, date picker in there. So I really like the fact that there's a lot of kind of collaboration in here. And, you know, it's Kyle Williams date picker. It's Nick Hunter's solution. Um, and then it's got my add on in there. But I'm hoping to see people maybe run with that that trips tri tri uh, technique there. Um, Margs, if you have any questions, I got a good pause point here. If not, I can start to uh, to move on to the next thing. No, I think you're good. I don't see any questions currently, so you are free to go. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, with that add-on, like any of the others, you will get a whole bunch of custom functions, which they'll probably be hard to find because I'm already in starting point. But you can see that a lot of these actually are Nick's. I just put the, the uh, document manager. Um, basically, all of this was taken from, from Nick's file. Oh, there is one other little kind of cool uh, thing I want to show off in here. Uh, that's not necessarily as add-on related. So this is Kyle Williams' date picker. Um, and no offense, Nick, but Nick's um, way of displaying the data up here, which is really cool, it would break 
in the add-on process. I don't know why, but any of you that dealt with the add-ons have figured out that like little things break. So this is actually a thing that Calvin at RCC made. So Calvin really liked what Nick had. And so it's a calculation. Let me see if I can get in here. There we go. It's this DM widget three, and it lets you put in the date and basically formats it that way. And a little uh, uh, cookie, if you will, with this, I don't know that Calvin released it in one of his, he very well might have. But if you go into the custom functions, you'll notice that we've got widget two and widget three. They're slightly different than each other. So outside of using this add-on, that's just something fun uh, that anyone in there can play around with. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And if anybody has any other questions on that, we're gonna move on to the other add-on, but by all means, jump in on that. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult on how to install. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I'm gonna go into list view. And we're gonna go into edit layout. And we're gonna do another add-on. Now I wanna again emphasize, I said this at the beginning, Jake already has an add-on in here that, that does what this one does. Uh, we ended up wrapping a little early because this one's really simple. Um, but when I started doing the add-ons a while ago, one of the things, the techniques that I started to reuse over and over again was this idea of trying to get as much of the code into custom functions as possible. And, the, and one of the reasons for that is it's a little bit more portable. Um, there's a singular location where, where the code is kind of running um, and it allows me to make updates across the app really easily because I don't have to go find things. So in doing so, I've had a lot of really basic custom functions. If you guys see some of my original add-ons, there are custom functions that they do one thing. You don't even pass it a parameter. It's just kind of like you, you call the custom function that gives you a JSON array or it gives you back the result of it. Um, as I started to build up all these custom functions, a couple things started to kind of go on in my head. A, am I making too many custom functions? Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Ruben. Um, am I making too many custom functions? Um, and when should I make the custom function versus just doing an inline calculation? And instead of a little extra time, I'll give you guys some of the thought process of what took place for me. So when I built the slide tabs out on, which is still probably one of my favorites, it's the one that takes the button bar and the slide panels to replicate what looks like a tab control. Again, from Nick, I made it, then Calvin took it and painted it and made it look really beautiful. Um, I would name JSON objects. And this might seem really simple or really silly, um, but and maybe you guys have run into this with your own variables before, but I named things a certain way and later I didn't want them to be named that way. But I have all these set JSON elements, get JSON elements, deciding that a name shouldn't be one thing or, or uh, anymore was really hard to go update across the app. But the names were confusing me as I was trying to build something and I needed to change them. So at a certain point, I'm like, you know what? That name is just going to be like a custom function. Then if I have to go change it, there's just this singular location that I can go and change it. And so then I really like that. Ooh, you just have a high calculation. It's a custom function, a conditional formatting that's a custom. Everything's a custom function. And some of the other engineers that I work with were like, but you can just do an inline calculation. Why, why make it a custom function? So here's the rule that I have. And this isn't just for uh, add-ons anymore. I actually just use this on things that I develop for people. If I have two things perform the same calculation on like a specific process, I'll go ahead and make it a custom function. And my thinking is this, if I have a button that turns gray when you're not supposed to push it because a certain condition is not true and inside of a script, there's a, hey, if this condition's you know, true or not true, we, we abort. So you push the gray button, it turns gray because of a calculation and the exit script is because of a calculation, I very well might just turn that into a custom function. And the reason I've done this is at some point I might realize that my calculation is wrong or needs to be updated or added to. And if I have two locations, there's two spots that I have to A, remember to go do it and two times the amount of work. Now you start having that in three places or four places, you can kind of see where that comes in. So then this idea ensued that if I'm building certain processes, I'm going to use custom functions for that so that I have a single location to go and update my code rather than lots of places to update my code. But then you start getting lots of lots of custom functions. And so then I started putting prefixes on them. And there's really an, a, a reasonable debate on whether that's fine and leave it there or use this next step. So we're gonna jump back into the add-on. So I'm gonna do the plus here. 
and I'll find dynamic list. And I'm going to choose this. There we go. So now we've got dynamic list over here. It's yelling at me a bunch. I'm going to go to browse. I'm going to go back to layout mode. I'm going to drag this on the screen. Okay. I'm going to ungroup those. And I'm just going to move this stuff over. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to slide it down there. And how many of you, I don't necessarily have to answer this, have had the need to create a checkbox on screen? And again, Jake has an add-on out there. By all means, go see it. He does some other cool stuff that mine does. Um, when I was really new to FileMaker, this was easy. You made a field and you made a checkbox and you put it on there. Um, but then as many of you probably encounter or uh, experience, that starts to become problematic for a few different reasons. Number one, multiple people might want to go make those edits at the same time. How do you clear the checkbox out? So then I started making these fake checkboxes. Basically a button that looks like a checkbox stores a list of, an, of the IDs, and then I can do whatever logic I need to with the, um, with the IDs that I have. And I used that for years and years. And I don't know what got into me, but um, a few months ago, I was working with a client who needed that. And we were gonna have to do it in a handful of modules. And so like I'd mentioned in the stream yesterday, the general rule that's coming about for me with add-ons is if I have even just the smallest of tasks that I'm repeating over and over again, maybe I can turn that into an add-on so that I can more quickly move forward. Because as I mentioned, I get kind of bored with it. When I was new, it was great. People would pay me to go and do the same task and I know how to do it. Now to me, I can provide more value to my, my clients because we can move faster forth from that. And I get more enjoyment because I get to work on the things that I'm more interested in, the more complicated challenges. And so with this one, once you drag it on, this clear button doesn't even need to exist. That could be a script trigger. You can do what you want with it. But right here, you gotta double click on this and you're gonna go into the parameter and what do you know? There's a custom function we have to configure. And so it wants to know the name of a field. So what you do is whatever table that you're in, you find the ID. Doesn't need to be UUID or UUID. It just needs to be the primary key of the table that you're in. You're gonna say, okay. You're gonna go to browse mode. But you can see my check boxes are there now. So I'm gonna go ahead and check, 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 and I can clear them. And if I need to do anything with those, check, check, check. In my data viewer, I've got a list of IDs. And I can actually query those list of IDs as well. Let me cheat on that in just a second. So before I do, before I cheat, I'm gonna show you guys one other thing here too, it's gonna cool up this. So I'm gonna go to contacts, we're gonna go to list view, we're gonna go to layout mode, and we're gonna repeat the exact steps that I did. So we're just gonna drag this on screen. Try to get them to actually show up. I was like, am I gonna start experiencing bugs? So just like we did another one, I'm just gonna slide these over, pop that down here, put that up there, slide up, double click. And again, now because we're in contacts, if anyone can guess what key we're gonna put here, you said ID contact out loud, you're right. Go to browse and it works. Okay, so the cool thing too is doesn't matter. As long, it only works module by module. You can't have two accounts open up at the same time, but different users can get in and that just works. Um, so again, Jake's got one for this. He clicks on the sub summary. It does the whole section. His add-on, I'm, I'm not trying to say you should use this add-on versus it. Here's what I wanna show you guys about this add-on. Then I'll show you how to query the IDs because I have to remember myself. So let's go to manage custom functions. And let's find dynamic list. And I can even open the add up. When I first made this, dynamic list had lots of custom functions. One to make the check mark show or not show. Another one for the parameter to get passed. Another one for clear. I think I have another one somewhere else. I had all of these different custom functions, but a lot of the custom functions were extremely basic. Like, just give me the list of IDs. Give me the variable name show me this or don't show me. Most of them have no parameter whatsoever. And this is when I started to come up with this idea and I pondered it to my team and we kind of hemmed and hawed on it. Some people were like, I like it, some didn't. Of Maybe I can just layer all, or fold all the custom functions into one. And kind of like you have an API where you call an API and you have a request and then you have some sort of JSON parameter. Maybe we could do something like that. 
Um, the upside is instead of a bunch of custom functions, you have one. The downside is those other custom functions are extremely easy to use, whereas this is a little bit harder to use. Um, and so like even right now, I'm like, how do I query the list of ideas? I have to go remind myself. And so um, I've got some tools that allow me to copy text really quickly. I think I've showed you that in some of the other um, live streams. Um, but I, I, I basically have a... Um, a template that I use for this now. Um, Cause I said, if this is all gonna be folded into a single custom function, it really needs to be as easy as possible to, to follow. And so the main thing I have up at the top here is what are the different requests that I can call? So I've got add and remove, I've got clear. So add and remove is how you add an ID to the list or remove it from the list. Clear just wipes the list out. Um, valid is whether or not the check mark shows is the ID for the record that I'm in in the list or not in the list. Data is the one that I think that I wanted that will give me the list of IDs. And then I have some more complicated ones that I added near the end here. Okay. So we have a big let statement. And this is where these small resolutions are a little tricky. I'm going to scroll quickly and then go back through this. There's a big, there's a let statement with a result that has a case statement and it looks for that request. And so in this situation, the request is set ID, there's my single step and down, and that's the result, that's it. But then as we scroll down, you'll see that some of these are a bit more complicated. So this one, the add and remove has a let statement in the result of the case. So depending on what your comfort level is with calculations, this can be a bit hard to write yourself. And that's why I said there's some pros and cons here. Um, but you can basically just add as many more as you want. In fact, I have this example area. And when I want to add a new request, I just copy this and I go put it below or above one of the other ones where it makes sense. Um, but you can see some of these are really basic. Request data, give me variable. Um, and then down here, if I don't have a valid request, kind of like John Isons would give you an error, you'll get a result of invalid request. I think that these error checkings are really important because it's it's kind of nice with an API or your function or anything else says, hey, this didn't work versus a, a blank result. What does blank mean? Did it not work or did one of my calculations fail? You don't actually know. Um, the other thing is because it's in a let statement, at the very top here, I can declare a bit of variables or do a bit of logic that is consistent amongst the rest of them uh, down below. So all of them can refer to this while the add and remove that I had, it declares its own variables that are only specific to that request and only perform um, if you call that request. Um, the other thing that where it can get really kind of complicated, let me see if I can find the example for it, is requests can recall the, uh, the custom function itself kind of recursively. So in this one, the parameter button um, it actually recalls dynamic list to get a different value. And that's actually part of how it performs. So that's where things can get quite a bit interesting. Um, let's go look at a, a couple examples of how this works and also how I, I retrieve the data now that I've reminded myself. So over here, I can do data viewer. Let's delete all this old stuff. Let's do add value. We're gonna do dynamic list. I believe it was data. I don't believe mine's case sensitive like John's is. And boom. Now, one of the things I love about these custom functions and these add-ons is how they evaluate. And if you jump modules, they just work. That to me is still one of the coolest things that I can jump from module to module and it recalculates appropriately. They know the window that they're in or the module that they're in. And similarly, they know the individual line that they're in to show this, this check mark. So that's how I can retrieve the data. So if I have a script that's performing, it can use that list and go do things. And then when it's done, I can perform the clear. And most of these are pretty simple in here. So on clear, it calls dynamic list and passes a parameter clear. And I'll show you this in just a second. The um, button over here calls dynamic list. I'll, I'll give you guys a uh, inside peek. There's only one script. And the one script is a parameter that calls the custom function and puts the parameter in there. In fact, there's no script necessary for this. You could literally just have a set variable in each one that calls the custom function with the parameter that's in there. I left the script because I'm assuming that for myself or anyone else, 
any time we add that checkbox, we'll probably want it tied to some other action. So you could take the script and duplicate it per module, um, or you can you know add in whatever logic you want. Um, but that's all it's doing is calling this this uh, function with that parameter. So that's the only script. So when you go back over here, now we can realize this is basically just saying, hey, call dynamic list with, oops, let's do the user one first. Call dy dynamic list with this clear command. Very, very simple. But then over here, we can get more complicated. I need to call dynamic list. I need to refer to the ID that's in the row that I'm in. And so I call dynamic list, but then I have another custom function because I realized that while the parameter is extremely versatile, because you can basically pass JSON arrays, 99% uh, or in this case, 100% of the time, I'm really only interested in like two things. I'm interested in an ID field and I'm interested, I think, in like the name of the field or the, or the variable name. That's all I want. And so I added this custom function called dynamic list parameter. And it just says, well, give me those two things. And it just turns it into JSON for you. This could just as easily say ID and then the value, and this would be parameter, but you can see why that's sometimes a little easier to use. And in this case, the, uh, the, the request is parameter button. And I'm not necessarily gonna dissect it because um, the idea it, it, for me today isn't to show you guys exactly how dynamic list works. By all means, I'm happy to answer questions on it. So if you have them, throw them over. I'm sure for a lot of people, it's like, wow, Christian, you just moved really, really fast. I kind of see what's going on there, but it's confusing. Um, it isn't to, to de decipher how this works. It's more so to throw this idea out in the universe. And who knows, my idea could turn out not to be great, which is if you're building custom functions, some, some of your own processes, maybe there's some value in us creating a, a single function that kind of does what we want. And what's nice with most of these is the request can just do what you want, but then that, that JSON parameter really gives you versatility that you don't know what, what you're gonna want the function to do in the future, but you know that because you can pass JSON to it, you can add any amount of variables that you want and it won't break the existing parameters because like unlike uh, the list or some of the other ways that we've done parameters in the in the past. Jake, I see you keep typing, but you don't actually ask a question. Um, and then the last one that's on here, if I right click on this and go into the conditional formatting, there it is again to dynamic list, just calling valid. You can actually see some of the iterations I use to, to get where, where I'm at. So um, to kind of recap on today's session, and if there's I don't see questions, Margaret, so I was gonna keep going, but is there any we on the other one actually uh, stream? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Does this work in a portal? That's a good question. I haven't tried it. Is there a portal in here I could throw it in and just see? I I, I would have to say I'm probably not because I didn't build it that way, but it might. Um, da, 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 da. Do we not have any records in here? I almost think I put it in a portal for my client because there this like the other one started off with just a, like a demo file that I made for another uh, another client. Um, let me add a couple of records here real quick. Go back to design a counter. There we go. Add another one. I feel like it's going to need some sort of configuring, but let's go back over here. I'm always willing to try something in live TV. I mean, it's the worst that'll happen. I'll just have egg on my on my face. Okay, so we're going to drag this on screen. I'll just delete the date out of here. Put that right there. I always slide it back up because it'll bother me otherwise. Double click on that. And let's, oops, what a TO is that? I can't see this working, but T01G. So T01G. We would want the primary key. Like I said, I would be surprised if it did, but seems like it's working. Oops, I didn't mean to click on that. Um, let's go back over here, estimates. And then just out of curiosity, I'm gonna do data viewer. Look, it's got the estimate IDs. I was wondering, I thought I had maybe done that with a client. So um, yeah, it does. I learned that in, in real time. So uh, that's handy to know.
I think Jake's does as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, other questions? I see a little activity there in um, Discord. Uh, from YouTube real fast before you do Discord, you could open related uh -huh. records in a card. Can you open related records in a card? Yeah. Or rather, right, somebody not... says you could open related records in a card. So I assume he knows. Sure. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think that this works just because it's just, you're telling it, you're basically telling it what ID that you add and remove from a list. If you guys are not familiar with the custom function, if you come out of here with just one real basic thing, and this is not mine, it's this add remove list items is such a powerful custom function. You can write this yourself, but basically it lets you add remove. If you have a list... So that's why I was thinking that this might work within the portal. So I've got cat and over here in our list, we've got dog and lizard. So it adds cat to the list, a lizard. But if I change this to dog, we'll just end up with leozard. So that is a really handy one. That's why I figured it would work in the portal, but I just wasn't positive because you, know, you build something, don't necessarily expect it to do that. Uh, other comments or follow-up questions there that I can't see? Uh, uh, nope. So the other one with Stu's now. Do either of today's add-ons require a plugin example base elements? No. Um, Wolfpack, if you have Windows, Wolfpack will tell you it failed on open to install base elements. I, I, I forgot about this because I don't test on Windows enough and I need to. Uh, that doesn't matter. Wolfpack works fine. All the all the base elements does in Wolfpack is gives you that really cool dialog box that it's installing. If you don't have base elements, that will fail. But neither one of these use any plugins. Um, the dynamic list is pretty much just custom functions and a layout object. And then the document manager is that one layout, a folder of scripts, and and a handful of fields. I'm just reading Jake's real quick. Sub summaries look set to play around to the, uh, definitely take a fresh look at the multi record select with sub summaries. Lots of summary dynamic lists. You might be able to add some summary checkboxes. I, I need to make a dynamic list to point out. Yeah. So, Jake's, I just I want to promote this here. So, Jake's is like the, the multi record select with sub summaries. So, this is very similar to what I have, but in, if you have sub summaries, you click on like the California one and all the California checkboxes check. It's pretty neat. Um, I actually had kind of forgotten about it, or I probably would have used it with my client. Um, and then and then maybe Jake's saying that, yeah, in terms of grabbing all of these IDs, so maybe that's what the other person is saying. Yeah, you select all these, you get your list of IDs, you can put them into a global, you can GTRR, you, whatever logic you want to bake into that. This checkbox thing, um, I'm sure most of you out there have had to do something like this for the duplication or sending out emails, whatever it might be. It's this is one of those things that, that I use maybe a couple times almost a week. I don't know if that's exaggerating, but unlike an API that I, I don't work with on like a weekly basis. So I'll just do a quick recap really and I think cool. we'll we'll land on time for once. Um <laughs> so the, the main thing I hope people kind of get out of this the the just to recap everything is a document manager, uh early Christmas presents so that you guys can easily add Nick's cool document manager from the UI UX sample file to your own file, but also a cool technique for the creators out there. Uh, Jake, Willow, um, Leland, you know, uh, Kyle Williams. I would love to see if you guys can't take something like that and go a step further. I, I really see this suddenly gives us the ability to move uh, a large, I don't want to say necessarily a full on module, like let's take baby steps, but to portably move large amounts of code because we can write a find and replace that says, hey, take the base table, do the find and replace, take these one or two buoys, do the find and replace, and suddenly we can move big blocks of code. And then for the dynamic list is this, I, this idea that I'm still tinkering around with of can we have single functions that you basically pass multiple uh, or different requests to and get something else out of. In fact, one of the things that inspired that was was monkey bread. So when I first started using monkey bread, I was really confused because there's like this one function and then you put things into it. And that's what kind of inspired this idea that like, oh, you really could have one function, but tell it to do different things as long as you can make the code clean in the calculation there. Um, but Regardless of you wanting to use those techniques, I think the checkbox and the document manager is a, a cool little toy. So uh, 
thanks everybody for letting me come and, and share off the stuff that I've been meaning to share off, share for uh, half a year. <laughs> up here who uh, may be a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 